morning, everybody. Life is energy in transition. That's a definition I heard from my freshman biology teacher at Antioch High School in 1988. It's the furthest I got in biology, so it's somewhat ironic that I ended up with a medical command here at Fort Carson, Colorado, <laughs> helping soldiers transition. I've been a commander with the Warrior Transition Battalion for the last two years as the Alpha Company commander. Our mission is to help soldiers who are severely wounded, injured, or ill transition sex successfully back to civilian life or to return to duty if that is what is in store for them. I'm going to share a little bit of, with share a little bit with you about my past and how I got from where I came to here in Colorado. My world began on Valentine's Day in 1974. I was the youngest of five boys. I was born into a great blue house that seemed to always be under construction. <laughs> My father was a drywall contractor, a painter, a mechanic, a bodyman, anything working with his hands. He was a perfectionist, meticulous when it came to making seams come together and disappear, making perfect transitions. The neighborhood I was born in is a unique area in Lake County, Illinois, surrounded by lakes north of Chicago. We're influenced by Chicago culture. There seems to be a tavern on every street corner. We're not in the cornfields of Illinois, and we're not in the city, and we're impenetrable to the suburbs. There is something very unique about that little world that I grew up in, and that my father's brother lived a block away, and he had five kids. We pretty much ran that neighborhood. For the, for the first 10 years of my life, it was adventure everywhere. There was a duck farm that turned mulch, mixed it with duck manure, and sold it as fertilizer. There were berms 16 feet high we would run around in and have war and throw corn stalks at each other. And the Weber boys who were sent by their father to police that duck farm had salt pack in their shotguns, and they would shoot at us. My cousin Billy got hit. He's the only one who ever got hit, and it took his mom quite a while to fish out all the salt pack from his rear end. <laughs> there was also a tavern down the road where a lot of the folks in the trades would hang out, and most of the folks that worked in the trades got paid in cash. A lot of it was under the table, but it was a, a flourishing village where everyone knew each other and everyone took care of each other. I'd spend so many days in the hot summers there on the beach with my brothers out deep. I was afraid to go out. I would be close to the shore, the water barely touching my toes, and I would watch the minnows dart back and forth. My brothers would make it across the lake and back. Their legs always seemed like skyscrapers watching over me. After the first 10 years of my life, we moved from Lake Villa, the Venetian village, to Antioch. In adolescence over the next probably 10 years was a very dark time. Transitions for adolescents are often very dark. It was during those years that I learned to draw, I learned to paint, and I was often highly encouraged by my teachers to pursue art. I did play baseball, I had conventional friends, but a lot of my time I spent listening to Pink Floyd and doodling in notebooks. That got me through to where I was able to, through the encouragement of my teachers, to go on to school and pursue a career that I call my lovely mess. There's nothing I've done in my education or my career that is conventional. I started off at a community college in Northern Illinois. I replied to a job ad that said, freehand drawing skills wanted. It turned out to be a Budweiser distributor looking for somebody to hand paint their signs. So I worked for Anheuser-Busch through college. I studied abroad in Canterbury, England for a semester. I came back, went to Colorado to undergraduate school where I finished, got my bachelor's in English, was going to start graduate school, and I got a job with a publishing firm peddling textbooks, making them far too expensive for college students. <laughs> it wasn't for me, so I raised my hand, I joined the military. I went to the Defense Language Institute, got an AA in Russian, spent five years in the Intelligence Corps working in support of the missions in the Balkans, came back to Illinois to graduate school at the University of Illinois at Chicago. ROTC said, hey, why don't you come join us? I said, I'm an old man, I teach night school, I have a family. They said, it's okay, you can do it. So I commissioned into the reserves, 
And after many years of bouncing between long-term assignments in the reserves and doing intelligence work as a contractor, I finally got to my first assignment, not in the intel world, here at Fort Carson, helping soldiers transition, and it's been fantastic. I don't paint or draw too much anymore, but I do like to turn stories from my childhood into folk songs. I learned to finger pick on some of my long assignments, um, and I do love to golf. <coughs> I'm married. My wife and I have become woven as one. We've got beautiful children here, Carson, Roland, and Grace. And as my own transition is coming up, and I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing when I'm done with my command, we've decided to stay here, and I'm confident, and I know that better days are to come. And I do feel for the first time since I was 10 that I am in a place I can call home.